In this video, I will show you the seven most important ways in which you're leaving money on the table with Google Shopping Ads. What is up, guys? My name is Aaron. I'm the founder of Size Data Tool, the leading Google Ads boutique agency in the e-com space, and I am also co-founder of LB24, our very own eight-figure e-com brand. And in this video, I will break down to you the seven most important things that you have to do if you're running Google Shopping. Now, the reason why I'm recording this video is because most brands make the bulk of the Google revenue through Google Shopping. Yet at the same time, they don't understand how they work. It's a complete black box for them and they just put in budget, ROAS, and they pray for the best. That is why I will break down the seven things that we do in every account, including our own. So whether you run your ads yourself, whether you have an agency or an in-house team, do watch the video until the end, secure the My Report, and at the end of it, go back to your Google Ads account and check which boxes your Google Ads account ticks and which ones you have to do. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So the first optimization I want to talk to you about is title optimization. So just to clarify, what this means is that um, you don't have the same title that's on your PDP when you run Google Shopping Ads. You wanna have a different title for your shopping ads. Um, and the reason for this is that title optimization or basically what it says in your title is your main targeting tool. Whatever keywords are in your title, you will rank for them. Um, officially, Google says there's other things such as um, what it says on your page, what it says in your product data, etc. But this by far is the one that makes the most impact. And the reason you want to do this is because, for example, this product um, has a title with certain information. It has LEDs in there. It has uh, uh, storage, etc. But it is lacking a few things. Um, when we were selling this product, we found out that some of the most important keywords are centered around the sizes, the colors, and the stiffness of the mattress or the weight of the mattress. But if I was to have this information on every product, I would have crazy long titles. It would hinder the conversion. It'd just be long and it wouldn't feel normal. Um, but at the same time, I want to have this information in my title so that I can rank for it when people search for it. And this is where feed optimization tools come into play. A feed optimization tool basically allows you to connect to your backend, for example, in our case, Shopify, and you feed the product data into that tool. Within that tool, you manipulate and optimize that title to include things such as size, color, etc., and then you feed it to Google. So that way I can have an optimized title on Google, yet keep the same title on your website. And I'll give an example. This is what the title looks on our homepage, but this is what our title looks like on Google Shopping. You see clearly here, we have the sizes, we have the color, we have the weight, and we have the brand, which means that we can now rank much better for these keywords. Um, the outcome will be more precise targeting, especially for keywords that convert, and that will have a net benefit across all KPIs in the account especially revenue because you're now concentrating your budget on what works. It will improve ROAS because you target less stuff that's not relevant. And overall, it can also impact CTR, it can impact conversion rate, overall a super strong net benefit for the account. And I've basically linked here the title tool that we use. Feel free to use it as many others. Again, people always say, what's the best tool? There is no best tool. The best tool is the one that you can um, use effectively. So that's the one we use and an example of how we optimized our own products. Now, second point is product ratings. Everyone should know product ratings. They are basically the stars underneath um, your products. For example, here I've Googled fridge and you can see these are the product ratings. Now, what makes product ratings so important is that they make your product stand out. I instinctively would rather click on this than that because it shows me, hey, 28 people have rated it with five stars. Um, so it makes you stand out visually and it also creates more trust and it just looks more appealing and, and, and better overall. So typically the outcome, the impact that we see is you have a much higher uh, CTR click-through rate, you have a higher conversion rate and you also have a higher click share. <clears throat> the click share is basically your market share. If there's 100 clicks, how many of those are you acquiring? And again, by looking better, by looking more appealing, you will have a higher share of clicks. So definitely um, something I recommend to everyone. It isn't too complicated setting them up. I've linked a Google resource here. Basically what you need is a review aggregator. There's a list of aggregators on this link that are supported by Google, but they're very, very common. Um, 
you then have to connect your merchant center to that aggregator import the reviews and you're good to go everything's described here and if you do need help with it there's a link to a uh, shopping audit on the top of this video so uh, feel free to book in as well um, but that's basically product rating super important again something everyone should do no excuses why you shouldn't have them now next up is css shopping comparison partners i have to say this is only applicable uh, to some countries especially europe um, and what it basically does or what it is, is that if you, for example, look at this, you will see that there is different um, providers is by Google. And then there's also other um, providers that are basically hosting the products. Now, the backstory as to why Google did this is a bit complicated. I won't get into it. But um, the incentive is that you get up to 20% lower CPC. So Google is saying, hey, join a CSS and you will have up to 20% CPC discount. So lower cost overall. And we did test this uh, with around 50 to 60K, I believe, back in the day. And we found out that there was a 15% cost reduction. This is huge, especially for high um, seven or eight figure brands. If you're spending 100K on Google shopping, nothing extraordinary, quite uh you know something quite usual you will literally save 15 grand a month or over 150k per year so there is literally no reason why you shouldn't do it it's a pure net benefit now if you don't have a css we at cyrus have actually our own css and we have a best price guarantee so if you're not doing it yet do check it out and we'll be happy to help so next up is the pmax index split so basically there is two ways to run pmax shopping ads uh, you can have one campaign targeting all products or you split them into different categories most people start off with a all products campaign and while that can work well the problem is is that you will have products that do completely different in terms of performance you will have high performers um, that generate a lot of revenue have very high ROAS. You have others that just generate high revenue, but not so much high ROAS. You'll have low revenue, high ROAS products. Um, you have like uh, mid performers that do kind of well, and then you have low performers. Now, what happens if you put all these different products together in one campaign? The top performers will eat all the budget, rightfully so. They're generating the performance. At the same time, the low performers will get hardly any traffic but at the same time, they will drag down the ROAS as possible within that campaign. Um, so the way you can imagine it is, uh, imagine a football team that has literally everyone in the same team. All the ages, uh, pros, non-pros, everyone's in the same team. It doesn't make sense. The team can't work together properly because people are just on different levels. And that's why you should split your products based on their performance. Now, you want to have one campaign that's above index. The index is the KPI that you'll pay attention to. So for example, the ROAS, right? You want to have one campaign that has a ROAS that's higher than your target. Those are your top performers. That's where you want to be as aggressive as possible and feed in as much budget as possible and scale very high. Then you have your index campaign, which is basically the products that are on target. That's the backbone of your uh, account usually generates a significant amount of revenue and is not to be underestimated because sometimes the top performers are seasonal. And lastly, you have the low performers. And what you do is you isolate them and you fix them. There's a reason why the product's a low performer. Maybe it's too expensive. Maybe it's too cheap. Maybe there's something on your PDP. Maybe you need different media buying. But if you isolate the issue, you, you can work on it. It's like Having a football player that, that's, that doesn't play very well, if you put him with the pros, he will, he will just uh, be swamped. Instead, you want to take him out and coach him individually. And that's the best analogy I can give you. That's exactly the same thing you want to do with your products. You want to put them all together and then work on improving them. Um, that avoids uh, zombies. Zombies are basically products that are just lying around and not doing anything, which is what would happen if you leave them uh, with the top performers. Um, furthermore, when you do an index split you use it together with certain scripts that do this automatically for you so you put on 100 products into a campaign and based on their performance they will be automatically assigned to the different campaign tiers right they go for example to the low lower tier you optimize them and then they automatically move up to mid on target and then high performers um, so what this does is it just gives you so much more control on your setup I think it makes your setup much more sustainable because you're not relying on a few products. It increases 
um, the profitability, faster scale, and especially you just um, revive zombies. Products that usually wouldn't work, you give them another chance. And I've linked a very good resource on how to do this um, and also the script that you need in order to move the products around. Next up is feed only Pmax campaigns. Now, um, Pmax campaigns are a massive black box for a lot of people, but they've been improving a lot. And honestly speaking, uh, on shopping, that's most of what we use. We hardly use any classic shopping campaigns. Um, the issue a lot of people have with Pmax is that it can target multiple networks. And that's not always a bad thing. That can be a really good thing. Um, for example, we see it a lot with beauty um, projects. Uh, we see that that tends to work really well when you have very good assets and you simultaneously target top funnel networks as well as shopping that does work really well. But sometimes you only want shopping traffic. You basically want um, the equivalent of a smart shopping campaign. And um, in order to do that, you basically have to create a feed only Pmax, a Pmax that only shows on Google Shopping. Um, and this is important when the standard Pmax setup doesn't work for you, right? For example, in our case, uh, we sell beds. The standard Pmax don't tend to work really well. Why? Because our product is a super bottom funnel product. You know, uh, you're not going to buy a bed with LEDs for a couple grand by accident. You have to be actively looking for it. So for us, feed only Pmax campaigns work really, really well. You can exclusively target the shopping network um, and the impact that you have is so much higher efficiency. I've seen it many times when you don't do feed only, uh, the campaign start spending in different networks, display, etc. It's just inefficient. So it's a tool you have to have in your box. And I've also linked a very good resource on how to do this. Next up is extracting search terms from your Pmax campaign. Um, so Pmax campaigns do give you a lot of data but it is somewhat limited. And this is where a few people in the community, in the PPC community, have come up with very cool scripts that allow you to extract more data on what types of search terms are being used, what networks you're actually being shown in, and it gives you so much more data. Um, I remember one case that was like three weeks ago where we onboarded a very big eight-figure brand, very well-known eight-figure brand, and they were not using feed-only Pmax, they were using standard Pmax. And I was certain that they were getting their conversions from shopping. It's like 90% of the time, that's the case, right? Um, but um, we actually ran the script and we checked the search terms and we checked the networks and we discovered something we would have never expected. And that is this brand actually generates most of the revenue on Google through display. I'm talking six figure revenue a month, multiple six figures, something I've never seen before. Um, well, at least not in a long time. Now, had I not used a script, I would have maybe turned it into a feed-only Pmax with a uh, index split, and I would have completely tanked the account. But having done that, I know, okay, I need to focus on display or top funnel. So now we're focusing on the margin and it's working really well. This would have caused hundreds of thousands in damage if gone wrong. So more data allows you to understand how the setup's working, how to perform better, uh, and just how to avoid mess. So definitely something that you must do if you're running Google Shopping. So definitely something you must do if you're running Pmax is extract your search terms, understand um, what's converting, understand the different networks and make better decisions. The impact that you will have is much higher efficiency because again, you understand what works and much better scale. Um, I've also linked a script here. Um, I think it's a paid version, but it's it's worth it way in gold. Next up is um, split testing images. Now, um, Google Shopping is a comparison inherently, right? Uh, you compare different products with another. Um, to give you again the example of the fridge, everyone is basically, you know, using the same images. Everything is the same. It's a white background and a fridge, which is totally fine. But um, <clears throat> imagine you had one of these products and instead of just having a white background, you would have a light blue pastel background. It wouldn't take away the attention from the main product, but it would make it really stand out among these products. So that's one way uh, you can leverage images. And the other way is if your product um, has a certain application, for example, if you're selling a protein shake, you can use an image that basically shows, instead of just showing the can or the, the tub, you actually show the ready shake 
or you show someone drinking it or you see, show someone pouring it. It just makes you stand out more. Now, this doesn't always uh, result in better performance, but it really can. And if it's applicable to your product, you should definitely do it because again, it makes your ad stand out. And if you do it the right way, it will increase your CTR, it will increase your conversion rate, and again, also your uh, click share. Same thing here, this is something that you have to do with your feed tool, and I've linked the one that we're using in the uh, my robot here. And that is it, guys. These are the seven tips that I would apply if I'm running Google Shopping ads. Um, you have a link to the smart robot in the description. It's totally free, and again, I've linked all the resources here so you can actually go ahead and implement things accordingly. That's it from my side. If you like this video, leave us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, leave us a subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.